Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. As I mentioned in my previous video when I did a review of this. I was having trouble updating it. It's updated fine now. So I'm going to show you my settings in the sim. Now I've set these up with aircraft flight, the Cessna 172, 152, Beaver, general aviation aircraft. I've changed quite a few of the button assignments, changed quite a lot of the sensitivity settings as well. And one other thing I've done with this, this lever here, just zoom in on that for you, now controls my mixture. Now unfortunately my air aircraft has crashed so I'll just control E to start it back up. So yeah. Quite a few different settings on this wonderful Velocity 1 flight stick. Doesn't it look amazing? Okay, listen, let's not dilly-dally. Let's get on with this video. Okay, so we find ourselves in options. Still got a flight loaded in because we'll be referring to that later. But quick question. I've got my settings, the ones I'm about to show you, saved on my PC version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Because on my Series S, the profiles won't save for me. I did ask Bob, Dr. O Dr. Oculari in the Discord, whether he could try it on his Series X and his profiles for his Velocity 1 flight stick are saving. So my question is, firstly, which uh, Xbox, if you have an Xbox, uh, Series S or X, which one do you own? And do your profiles for your Velocity 1 flight save, particularly on the Series S, like I've got? Because if it's not saving for me, then something's amiss. But if it's saving for you, yeah, then something's something is amiss there. So do let me know. Okay, so we'll go straight to control options here. And I'll show you some settings that I've set up. So make sure your Velocity 1 flight stick is selected. As you can see, I've got a profile name test here. And everything, it'll come to sensitivities, I'm just making sure. Uh, I'll come to them later, but everything seems to be saving fine. First thing I'll show you is the cockpit camera. Now, I've not changed much here. I'm going to show you the two buttons on screen there for the two PLV, basically. Hat 1 and Hat 2, or H1 and H2. Not changed much. The cockpit, uh, your axis, the, so to look around the, the cockpit, uh, cockpit view, pitch axis and, and your basically, uh, they're set up by default. So I didn't change them. And the previous and next pilot position, I'll show you them in a moment, of course. But I've not changed them either. I've just left them the same. The only thing I did change are the quick views. You'll notice here I don't have quick view left and right on my hat one. Uh, I've changed that to something else, which I'll show you. Uh, well, I, I can actually show you some of them. Now, if you go to instrument views, now instrument views should be under your camera main heading and you should have a separate sub menu rather uh, and you should have a separate sub menu called instrument views i've set it up like always previous in instrument view and next instrument view and of course what that does if you're down in your instruments we're at default at the moment so nothing well that does do something my hats one left and right i'll show you later what it does but if i go down to my instruments go hat one left and right I can cycle between my instruments, which I like. So my pretty much my G one thousands mainly in the Cessna one hundred seven two. Let's get it back to the top there. Go back to options. So that's what I've changed there. Whilst we're on that subject, so let's go back to control options. Show you a picture of where hat one is again. Under now, where would this be? This would be instruments and systems. That has a menu of its own. 
So click into that menu from uh, Filter All, of course, if you don't have it set up, and Flight Instruments. My Hat 1 will increase... Hat 1 right will increase my heading bug. Hat 1 left will decrease it. Let's go back and show you. So just concentrate on this blue heading bug down here. I'm moving my Hat 1 left and right. I'm going to show you all these working in the sim later. Actually show you physically on a camera with my Velocity 1 flight stick in view. But as you can see that blue heading bug, that's what left and right does. If I come down to instrument mode, it will no longer... Oh, come down to my instrument views. It will no longer move the heading bug while I'm in this view. It will just cycle me between the instruments. So just be aware of that if you set it up. It will only do it when you're in the default cockpit view. Uh, move your heading bug. Okay, let's continue with more settings. Okay, so onwards and upwards. Let's just go to control options. Uh, ensure your velocity one flight stick, that should go without saying, is selected there in white. I'm just going to show you a picture down here of the banker buttons. So basically, it's the left hand banker buttons A, B, X, and Y. I've changed these quite a bit. Now for A, I've got it as toggle parking brakes. That was on B originally by default. I've deleted that and put it as my A button one or A basically toggle parking brakes. For B and Y, I've got them on the con flight control services, secondary control services, increase and decrease flaps. Increase will be X button three. Decrease will be B button two. And what that does is increase and decrease your flaps in increments. So not all the way down. I believe by default there were buttons. There you go. That's flap stage one, flap stage two, and full flaps. Uh, I believe originally by default there were buttons set up where you would retract and extend flaps. What that does is extend and retract flaps completely i didn't want that so i deleted where is it flight control services secondary control services i've deleted those assignments i've also deleted let me just get rid of this picture to the bro oh, it's gone annoy uh i've also deleted the flaps axis here there was a this lever was set up as flaps axis i'll come back to that in that lever in a moment but i've deleted that assignment too so all i've got it's B and X to increase and decrease the flaps. And Y, I've just kept as default landing gear. Any aircraft I'm flying that has a landing gear, Y will just toggle. So take up the landing gear or deploy it. Okay, so let's get, just get rid of that picture to the right. Under this lever now, obviously, I've mentioned it, so I'll talk about that now. I've set that up, as I showed you before, under power management. Under mixture, mixture axis. If I put the filter to all, if you want to find that, put your filter to all to find it in the first place. Under mixture, you've got mixture axis one, two, three, four. Don't go for them, just go for purely mixture axis. So I've set that up. Let's go back to filter assigned. And don't have this ticked. So basically, when it's up, your mixture's fully engaged. When this lever's down, it's not engaged. And that works fine in the sim. I'll just show you that in fact. Just to be, oops, just to be complete there. So let's get in the cockpit. Move my view down. So you can see my mixture. I'm using my hat too to move my view there, which is good. And I'm just going to pull that, push and pull that lever. As you can see, my engine's probably going to cut out. Oh, it didn't do. That's great. So there you go. Okay, let's continue with more settings. Okay, so let's continue now with the right hand set of buttons. Before I do that, I did get a question on my other video, my review video. How can you set a whole task system like this up where you can control both mixture and prop and throttle at the same time? Well, you can. I've showed you how I set mixture up on my right hand lever. You could set your prop all up sorry propeller up on this left hand lever let's just go to filter and all for a moment 
And uh, if we go to power management and under propeller, open that. Uh, you'll have propeller axis here. You can set that lever up on that axis. And just bear with me just so it doesn't mess me around this system as it's been known to a little bit. Let's just extend and collapse all. Okay, and under power management, under throttle here, there's an option. I'm not quite sure which one it is, but I believe it's increase and yeah, I believe it's throttle one, increase and decrease. So you can set buttons up for that, increase throttle and decrease. And you've got increase small and decrease small as well. So you can set a couple of buttons up for increase and decrease throttle. Have these two levers set up for prop and mix. Not going to do that as I'm in the Cessna 172, but I may do that in something like the Beaver. Oh, what did I do that for? Let's go back to control options. Just going to show you a picture. Let this load in first. There we go. Show you a picture to the right there of the, back, of the banker buttons, off the banker buttons to the right. So B5 to B8. I've only set a couple of these buttons up or altered a couple. Under autopilot, I've got B5 as set up as autopilot nav one hold on. So autopilot nav one hold on and that's essentially like pressing the nav button in your cockpit and i'll show you this later anyway in practice and for b6 i've got autopilot heading hold on so with a combination of pressing the autopilot master on which is in b16 let me just remove that picture and just to the left of the trim wheel, you've got B16. By default, it's set up as toggle autopilot master, turning your autopilot on and off. I've left that alone and I've cleared B17. Let's get back to what I was saying. Using a combination of toggle autopilot master on, turn it on, heading hold on, and then using my hat one left and right, which I showed you before to move my heading bug around. I'll show you this in practice in a moment. I can set up my autopilot to either follow heading mode and using my hat one, I can move my heading bug and manipulate the autopilot that way or to follow a nav, a course you have set up by pressing B5. So pretty straightforward. The only other button I believe is B8 by... Oh. Isn't it fun when it does that? Press B8 again. That's toggle lights. Uh, so turn your lights on and off by default. I've just left that alone. And B7, I believe I cleared. And I don't have that set up at all. So I do have a button free if I want to set something more up. Okay, let's now continue with my sensitivity settings. So now I want to show you my sensitivity settings. Now, many of you may know, if you follow my channel, I did my first real life flight lesson a few weeks ago now, wasn't it? And I wanted to replicate that. The Velocity 1 flight stick feels like the stick that was in the aircraft that I flew. Just bear with me. I'm just getting a piece of card just to refresh my own mind. Uh, yeah, it was the Icarus uh, Micro Light aircraft. So it wasn't a Cessna aircraft, but I've always wanted since flying that aircraft and feeling the stick in that aircraft, I wanted to replicate that. Now, the Velocity 1 flight stick is stiff to begin with. So only follow this if you want to replicate, a, I've got to say, a stiff stick. Ah, do pardon me. Uh, but if you want to replicate that feeling of controlling a stiff stick aircraft so my axis left and right banking left and right on pc this will be different for xbox but it's axis x just move your stick left and right and see what's moving uh, i've put them to minus sensitivity minus 29 in both the minus and plus sensitivities axis. Left dead zone alone, neutral of course alone, extremity dead zone alone, and reactivity. Not had to play with them. I'm going to show you later. It does replicate that feeling of flight quite well. Pitching up and down, that's axis Y. If you're on Xbox, this will be different. Just move your stick up and down. Just see what's moving. I put them, as you can see, Again, sensitivity minus 29 in both the plus and minus uh, sensitivities. Left everything else this at, uh, at default there. Rudder, 
didn't need to change this much. Just twist your stick. See what's moving. Sensitivity is minus and plus at minus nine. Everything else, like the trim wheel, I believe, is that, is that the trim wheel? No, it'll be... Just, but everything else, there is a trim axis here as well. It's that one. I've just left it alone. They all behave perfectly. But those are the sensitivity settings I've set up. And all I've needed to set up for GA aircraft. So you're banking left and right. And you pitch both at minus 29% sensitivities. Or all four of them here. And rudders. On Xbox, it was slightly different, I've got to say. I'm hoping I can save my Series S a profile soon, but it may be an Asobo issue. I do need your feedback on that, folks. On PC, it's fine at minus 9. So those are my sensitivities. Okay, with that all shown now, let's go for a test flight. I'll set my camera up so you can see me using my Velocity 1 flight and show you these settings in practice. And okay, set up at runway 27 London City Airport, live multiplayer on. Let me just start recording on my camera. So hopefully you can see me controlling my Velocity 1 flight stick. Get internal. One thing I want to show you before I begin the flight, this touchpad on PC... See that cursor? It works as intended. It's fantastic on PC. Another question for you fine folk watching this video. How does it work on your system if you have an Xbox S, Series S, or Series X, or PC even? How do you find this touchpad? In my original review video on the Series S, it was pretty cumbersome. It was almost unusable. On PC, I believe this is working as intended. I can use my thumb to control that. I think this would be pretty handy in something like VR. But to be honest, if you're using this on PC, you typically have a mouse next to you. So it's probably easier to use a mouse. Although it does work fine, I've got to say. And as, in as intended, I believe, on PC. But do let me know how it's working on your system. Anyway, enough playing with that. Uh, oh, to show you. I've showed you this at the beginning of this video, but that mixture axis does work as you can see so I'm using this right hand lever if I'm at higher altitudes needs to need to mess around with mixture I can do that with that lever so that's quite handy and if I just reset my cockpit view there moving my hat one keep an eye on that left hand G1 files and you can see that blue bug the heading bug moving around I'm going to sync it to my current heading anyway but that left and right now controls that I'll show you that in flight oh I had it at full throttle, but let's go full throttle anyway. Press A to relieve my parking, release my parking brake. Twisting, so rudder action with the sensitivity settings. It works rather well, I've got to say, for taxiing around and even in flight if you don't have a set of rudder pedals. Works quite well. And up we go. And I'll just trim up a little bit there. Make sure my trim wheel is in sync. It is now. Oh, don't sink my bottom. There we go. So I'm climbing slowly now. Now, if you find, and a few people did, that this stick is too stiff for you, then don't put your sensitivity settings like I showed you before. You want them lower if you want sensitivity at all. At default, with no sensitivity settings, it's too light to move left and right. It just doesn't feel realistic. This feels, for all intents and purposes, I wanted to replicate my real-world flight and the feeling, and the stick rep replicates it, the feeling of it. But now the control of the aircraft pitching up and down and banking left and right replicates that flight, feels very realistic. It's not meant to be easy, and you'll find with many aircraft, many of the controls, at least the one I tried, you actually had to put some work in to move your aircraft around, which you would expect. Anyway, anyway, we're climbing slightly. Let's press my B-16 Autopilot Masters on. I'll just set a quick Autopilot assigned altitude. I should have done this before, but never mind. 1,100 feet. Throttle back a little bit there. Don't want to overspeed. I'm going to put it into heading mode. V6. I'm going to 
used my hat one to bank to the right. So I'm controlling this now under autopilot and the heading bug, as you can see down here. You know what? I don't have Rossin's get mini Garmin actually plugged in. I don't have the Mobiflight program running, but I should have done for this video. Then I could have actually uh, hand in and out of the map that way. But never mind. We can do it that way. We do it manually. So there you go. Heading mode works fine. And let's get back to my course now. I'm going to press B5, I believe it is. Put it into GPS. We're too far away from the magenta line, so I'm going to have to bank to the left. I'm still in heading mode, effectively, until GPS locks in. As you can see, GPS is white. You all pretty much know these basics, I expect, so I'm just using my hat one. And it's very useful to have your controls. I'm just using this hat to look around, and that works absolutely fine. So there you go. Do I need to bank a little bit more left there? It looks like it. I've just got a course set up for Heathrow. As you can see, though, those buttons work fine. While I, whilst I'm under autopilot, showed you... Oh, why is my Cessna making those as many sound bugs with this latest sim update? Just going to deploy some flaps. You can see that's working fine. So that's all working fine. Can't show your landing gear as it's a fixed landing gear. Ah. Oh. Blooming noises. Never mind. Well, listen, chaps, those are my settings for my Velocity 1 flight stick. Let's take autopilot off and control this manually. It feels realistic to me with those settings. It's a joy to fly. What a joy to use this flight stick is. Let me know your own th thoughts and share your own settings down below in the comments. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more many more videos on the Velocity 1 flight stick on their way as well as other videos and I'll see you soon.